All right, folks, for this next drawing, we're going to look at the wheel linkage assembly. Uh, this is one of the four assembly parts or assembly files that you're going to be creating uh, through this process. Uh, this one right here is uh, a little tricky in that there's just so many components. Um, it's not so much that it's a matter of it's hard to put together. There's just a lot of components and you need to make sure that you remember to place all the components where they need to go. Um, and then we do add in this uh, angle mate here of A, which is going to be relative to this large link uh, to the base. So at a 13 and a half degree angle is what that's going to be at. And then you guys need to solve for X. Okay, so at the end of this, you'll create your part. Um, then you'll measure for X. Again, this is in MMGS, just like all the drawings we've been doing. So if you measure in inches, it will be incorrect. Um, please make sure your measurement um, when you do it has to two decimal places. So it's 1.11, not 1.1, 1.11, two decimal places after the decimal. Make sure your answer has at least that mark, otherwise you will get it wrong. Uh, we are still going to be doing it based on percentage though, so um, if you're really close, you're going to get it, but um, this is such a small number. Um, that really close is a really fine line here this time. All right, so let's dive into it. Again, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and download all the part files. So make sure you download all of these files, put them into a folder. Um, once you have that into a folder, you're going to go ahead and open up SolidWorks. We're going to do a new assembly. And then we're going to load up all those parts right there. Now I have one already done, so i got to select all the parts. Hit open. Again, when we start this process, we're always starting out the base. Before you put the base down, go ahead and pin this um, properties menu up. That way it does not close. And then make sure you select just the base. So just the base. And then hit check mark. That sets the base origin and the, the assembly origin in the same spot. Now we can go ahead and put in the rest of our components. Uh, for this one, we just have one of each component. So I'm going to go ahead and start placing these in. And yes, there is kind of a strategic layout to this. Um, when I've, I've done this enough times that I kind of know what should go where and how it should go. So I'm kind of laying it out accordingly. Um, you can do the same. That's up to you. Uh, it really doesn't make a big difference as long as you get the parts where they need to go in, in the end. We're going to start by putting the pin Okay, or sorry, they call it the, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, the cylinder connector. Sorry, the cylinder connector. We're going to place that on the base. To do that again, we're just thinking about what touches what. So for this one, I'm going to go to my mate, and I know I want that pin to touch the back wall of this, and that's going to touch the bottom side of that. Good. Okay, so now that's touching. I also want this to be kind of in the center over here, so it's going to line up. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first move it into place to where it kind of looks right. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space in between these two. That way I can select the edges. I'm going to select this edge here, and I know it's going to touch this edge here, but it's going to touch as, as a tangent mate. Because it's not a coincident mate, you got a, a flat surface to a round surface, so it can't touch as a coincident and it can't touch as um, a concentric mate. It's got to be a tangent mate for that to happen. Once you have that though, you can see now this thing will slide up and down that path. Now, right now, there is nothing to stop it from going up and through um, because we do not have a limit set on that. That is something that you can do. Um, we're not doing it for this purpose though, we're going to keep on going. Um, so the next piece I'm going to put on is this lid. So I'm going to say I want that right there. That's going to go inside that hole. Good. Except you can see it's backwards, so I'm just going to flip it. That flips it around. Good. Okay, so that's lined up with that hole. That's good. So I'm going to rotate it around a little bit. And I want this one to be lined up with that hole. There we go. And then the last thing I need to do is I need these two faces touching. So I got that face there and that face there. And there we go. 
So I know zooming in and out and all the rotation kind of gets a little dizzying, but that's very necessary, especially with this part. I'm going to go ahead and put my wheel on. So the, how does the wheel touch? The inside of this circle touches the outside of that circle. And then the face here lines up flush with the face there. Good. I'm going to rotate this just over slightly because if I'm looking at my um, image here, which I closed out, let's see if it'll open back up. If I look at that image there, you can see that the little pin here is to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up right now. You can see I rotated that around. Now I'm going to put the large link so the outside, or sorry, inside part of that touches the outside part of that. And then same thing up here. So the inside part of that touches the outside part of that. Okay, so now when this moves, these two should move together. So before I put this little, <coughs> little link on, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and put in this uh, cylinder and the the piston here. So what touches what? I know that this piece right here is going to go to the inside of this hole. Good. So this lines it up. So now I'm going to do this face here. Touches that face there. And the last thing I need to do is make sure that this part right here is rotated around correctly. So an easy way to do that is I'm going to select on this face here and tell it I want it to be parallel to this flat face up here. So parallel, good. Now if I go to my front view, you can see that's perfectly dead center. Okay, I don't have to worry about putting an angle mate or anything on there. I just needed a flat surface there to be able to do that too. So now I'm gonna put this uh, piston actually inside that. So I'm gonna do the outside edge of this circle, goes to the inside and you can see the inside's kind of hard to select. So you kind of got to play with your mouse just a little bit. The inside part of the um, holder. There we go. And now this still rotates around though. So I need to do a parallel mate of the front of this to the front of that. That's a parallel mate. So now this will slide flat across there. So again, if I turn on my hidden lines visible, I can see that piston moving down that cylinder. Okay. So now I can go ahead and put on my uh, small link. So I'm going to go out, or sorry, inside of that circle to outside of that. And then I'm going to go up here again, inside there, to outside of that one. And then I need to move this link right here because right now these two are still able to be moved. And we don't want that to happen. So what we need to do right here is do the face of this is going to touch the back face of this one. So that's going to set that large link in place. And now we need to do the front face of this one. Oops, sorry, that's wrong. Selected the wrong one. The front face of the large link is going to touch the back face of the small link. And there we go. <clears throat> So that completes the actual assembly. So now if this moves, you can see it slides down that piston assembly. So now what I need to do is go ahead and put in my angle mate. So again, we said the angle mate was going to be 13 and a half degrees. So we're going to go up here to mate. I'm going to rotate around here. And I'm going to do this edge of the link to this edge here. And what should happen is they should come parallel, which means they're both going at, call it 90 degrees, call it zero degrees, call it whatever you want, but it's it's essentially a zero degree angle because they're both running the same direction. Angle. I'm going to set this, and this is why I said you got to kind of figure out what angle it's actually going at. So all the way vertical means it would have been 180 degrees. So I got to go 13 and a half degrees off of that. 180 minus 13 and a half. There we go, 66 and a half degrees. And once I have that done, I the only thing I need to do to figure this out is I just need to measure this distance. So I need to go ahead and put it back in hidden lines visible. And then what you're going to do for me is do measure 
and you're going to measure from this line to this line. Now I'm not going to do it because it's going to show you the answer. Um, this is something you need to figure out here. Um, but that is actually how you do that piece. Um, going back, I'm going to do a, a real quick adjustment right here um, on that mate. Again, when we have that angle mate, it's kind of tricky because like I said, it's 166 and a half right now. Um, if you like a, a more exact answer, instead of having to do a math problem, 180 minus 13 and a half, you can get it to where it says 13 and a half without doing what I just did. What you'd need to do in that situation, I just deleted that mate. You need to select, instead of this front wall here, I'm going to select this front edge still, just like I did. And I'm going to select the back edge of the base. And when you do that, and I hit angle, it should now come out as zero, or as that uh, as both of them running up. So it's 13 and a half. The difference there is it's taking the zero off the base, but when you add a part to it, it actually, because it's mating everything, for whatever reason in SolidWorks, it does flip that orientation. So this is 180 degrees off of zero. Um, it makes sense the more often you use SolidWorks. Initially, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that is how you'd actually get that 13 and a half is do that back edge instead of the front edge of an attached part. And it's because it's attached that it's doing that. All right, guys, good luck on this one. Um, if you have questions, make sure you send me a message. Thank you.